Okay, as you can see here, it's been another month and between life and kids and family and work and everything else I got going on, I've managed to scrape out another video for you guys. And so I really appreciate you guys stopping by and checking it out. Today is a little bit different flavor. First ever in Drive On History, we are covering an aircraft. And today specifically is the Flex Innovations Mamba 10 biplane, Gen 1. In today's video, we're gonna do a high level overview of this plane, what it is, who it's for. We're gonna talk about the plane itself, what it's like to own and operate it on a regular basis like I've been doing. We're gonna talk about the Gen 1 versus the Gen 2 and who the different generations are for. And then I'm gonna talk about my long-term experience and my long-term ownership. So the Flex Innovation Mamba is a park flyer size aircraft, but I would say that it's in the higher end category when it comes to foamies. So this is coming in at the $300 price point. And again, this is a little bit expensive for a plane this size. There are definitely a lot of comparable looking aircraft that are, that are gonna come in at a much cheaper price point. It's oftentimes $100 cheaper or so, but again, what you're paying for this is that precision performance that you're not really going to find in a foamy this size in many other places there are a few other manufacturers out there that, that make comparable stuff but flex innovations oftentimes is kind of in a class of their own the general specs of this thing is it has a 40 inch wingspan comes in about 54 ounces that is with a 2200 three cell battery it's about 3.4 pounds for those of us in the u.s and this is my favorite thing about this and we'll talk about this a little bit later but it has a 690 one square inch wing area so that's like how much surface area it has between the two wings and that's very significant and that's why I love biplanes specifically RC biplanes is because you get a ton of wing area and a very small footprint which makes it feel like a larger plane in the air it widens the flight envelope you can fly slower and that's all thanks to this this huge wing area for a plane this size and to put it into perspective I've also been flying my E-Flight Mall M7, which is a very big aircraft. That's about 60 inch wingspan, so about 20 inches more than this aircraft in wingspan. And that Mall actually has less wing area than this biplane. So this airplane will actually fly slower. I'm not positive, but I, I, I'd wanna say that it's faster than the Mall as well. It has a wider speed envelope, but that's not a knock on the Mall. The Mall is a different type of aircraft. That's more of a scale bush plane. But the thing I like about it is that extra wing area with without a huge footprint. So it fits in my car easily, it really fits my lifestyle well. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. So this is running off of a 2100 to 3300 3S LiPo, which is great for me. I have a ton of 2200 milliamp three cells. If you're into the aircraft hobby, you'll know that 2200 three cell batteries are kind of like a very common staple battery of the hobby. You see them all around. They, they fit in a lot of different types of aircraft. And so I really like that about this aircraft. This one comes with an onboard, it's called an Aura 8 flight controller. And basically all that means is it's gonna help with things like wind gust it helps it helps the aircraft fly in a little bit more heavy wind conditions and it's also going to give the aircraft a little bit more precise precision feel this is what allows this aircraft to have such a wide speed envelope it's what it allows it to fly super super slow on the edge of a stall and then all the way up to top speed when this thing really gets going the onboard flight controller just makes the whole experience more crisp. We'll get into the flight experience a little bit more later on in this video. One other unique thing about this thing is although it just has rudder, elevator, and ailerons, it actually has six servos, and that's because each aileron on each of the wings has its own servo. So there's four aileron servos total, and the extra servos are just going to give you more precise control, more, more quick response, and more precision control. These servos, by the way, are 15 gram Metal Gear servos, so they're high performance servos as well. Again, this is gonna give you more precision control and faster control. A lot of less expensive biplanes you'll notice that they will just have one servo per side and then they'll have the the ailerons linked together by some kind of linkage beyond that it also has a plywood subframe which i didn't think would be a big deal but that is what the motor is mounted to but also when you open the hatch that is what the battery straps to and it just makes the overall rigidity and ruggedness of this aircraft a little bit better than say something that was all foam or maybe foam and a little bit of plastic
Additionally, another feature about this thing that is really cool is the shark teeth looking vortex generators. And this really helps specifically in slow flight to maintain that control authority. Basically, when you come in on a slow approach and you're kind of in a high alpha at attitude as the air is coming over this wing, these vortex generators break up the air and give you more control authority with these aileron control surfaces. And you can really feel it. This thing flies incredibly slow. And a lot of that is thanks to the vortex generators coupled with that Aura 8 flight controller that I mentioned earlier. It's all running off of a brushless motor with a 50 amp ESC. They rate it for three cell use. I have ran this on four cell a couple times. I don't know if I'd recommend it. I kind of got into some speed wobbles when I did it. And 3S is more than enough power for me. If you want more power than this, that's what the Gen 2 is. And we'll get into that in a second. So this is running off of an 11.5 by 4.5 prop. Really nice. I think it's a custom prop for this aircraft. And again, on that three cell power with the 2200, it's, it's a great amount of power. Like I said, you can fly really slow, but it also has a ton of bite and a ton of torque. And you can put this thing into a hover. Even somebody like me, who's not a competent 3D pilot, can put this thing into a hover, no problem. So let's talk about owning this thing long-term. Like I said, I've been flying this thing for the past two years and it's treated me really, really well. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about it today. So this thing is mostly known for its 3D capability, but 3D is at the top of its flight performance and flight envelope. Beyond that, it, it actually is just a great flying pattern flyer, sport aerobatic flyer. Even, even I would say if you, if you dialed in the throws, I would even say this could be a good uh, aerobatic trainer plane if you're looking to get into aerobatics. The key is the proper setup. If you just run this with stock throws, it's gonna be a little bit of a handful for somebody who's new to having so much authority on each axis, on your pitch and your yaw and your roll. It is extremely capable when it comes to slow flight. This thing will slow down really, really nice, and it makes it an absolute treat to do low and slow flight coupled with touch and goes, landings, takeoffs, all of which are my favorite styles of flying. I like to keep my aircraft on the ground as much as I like to keep them in the air, and, and this thing is great. Another feature that I really love about the experience of this thing is the landing gear. And it's not necessarily the most rugged landing gear out there, but it is really good good in terms of performance. It just has the perfect amount of flex given the weight and the size of this aircraft that when you come down, it really does absorb shock from the airframe. And, and it makes it a treat to handle if you have the right conditions to drive this thing around on the ground. And actually, surprisingly enough, even with these wheel pants on here and with this aircraft being so small, you'd be surprised how much you can taxi this through. It actually will take off and land no problem on some pretty decently cut grass and a lot of that is thanks to the power that it has and the huge elevator so when you're on the ground you can keep that stick back keep your elevator pinned and that way you don't have to worry about nosing over which is a very common problem with tail draggers taxiing on grass it's nice to have an airplane that you can grow with, right? You know, this is capable of 3D, but if you fly it kind of casually and do some pattern flight, maybe some sport aerobatics, takeoffs and landings, it'll do great at that. And then if you're feeling like progressing a little bit, you can try to hover. You can try to put this thing into a knife edge. You can try to start tackling some of these more basic 3D aerobatics. And this is a great plane to do it on. With the performance of this thing and the onboard flight controller, the best way I can describe the flight experience is it feels like a simulator. And so for those of you who have dabbled with simulators on the computer or whatnot, flying RC aircraft, it's a great way to build muscle memory, but the simulator always ends up feeling a little too good to be true compared to when you go try to fly out in reality. And that's how this thing flies in reality. It just feels a little bit too good to be true like you can fly it in these high alpha attitudes you can fly it extremely fast you can fly it in ways where with other aircraft it would make you feel uncomfortable this one it makes you feel extremely comfortable and that's why this is such a great plane to progress with and to keep learning with and that's what i've been doing the only issues I've had with this thing so far is the plywood battery structure inside the aircraft that I mentioned earlier. It did break. I was able to easily fix it with some CA and it was more so my fault for over tightening my battery, but it is one thing to note. And then beyond that, like I mentioned earlier, I damaged the rudder on this thing, putting it into my trunk a couple times. But the way that they have these 
CA hinges on these control surfaces. It was actually really easy to repair. I repaired it, there's no visible damage at all, and it basically is good as new. And so those are really the only two issues that I've had with this thing thus far. That being said, I've been fortunate that I haven't crashed this at all, really. I've had a couple rough landings where it flipped over and stuff like that, but no significant crashes to note. Another gripe, and this is a nitpick, but the battery life isn't the best. I like flying low and slow. I like flying super efficiently. And this aircraft is just simply not originally designed to do that. This is a high energy output. And so the power system, it kind of eats through those three cell 2200 batteries quicker than I would personally like. But on the flip side, you do have a lot more power. You have a lot more thrust, a lot more torque in the motor and the propeller. And that's part of the reason why it's eating through that battery. And that is what's going to allow you to do these 3D aerobatics like hovering and stuff like that. You wouldn't be able to do that with a less powerful, more efficient setup. The boxes at this check for me are significant because my relationship with the hobby these days is, is quite a bit different and everybody has their own unique situation. For me, I have two kids, I got a busy job, I have family life, I have stuff going on all the time, home projects, stuff like that. So I honestly have very little time to go out and fly. And so when I do, it's typically like, 30 minutes here, 30 minutes before I go to the grocery store, 30 minutes you know, on my way somewhere. When it's nice and the, I get a break in the weather, I'll, I'll stop by and I'll burn a couple batteries. And that's really the extent of it. And for that, this thing fits the ticket pretty well. You can easily have it ready to go at all times. You can pop it into your trunk with ease. You can fly it in small places pretty easily. It's not a super intense plane, so you're not gonna freak out any bystanders or people walking around the park. It doesn't make any mean sounds. It's not super crazy high energy. And again, like I mentioned earlier, this is the Gen 1 and there's also a Gen 2. And the Gen 2 came out more recently. The Gen 2 is basically an even higher performer. It will actually run off of 6S, so it has more power, has a little bit different prop, motor, power setup, and it runs off of 6-cell battery. And they claim that it gives you much higher performance and also a little bit higher flight time. But for me personally, the lighter weight setup, the common 3-cell 2200 battery, which I have a ton of, it just makes more sense for me to, to use that instead of using the newer high energy one. I'm more of a low energy flyer. I like to relax, fly low and slow. And this one just kind of fits that bill better than the Gen 2. That being said, they're both great aircraft. I have no doubt about it. The other thing, because of the small footprint of this, I have a Honda Accord and a Honda Civic, and this thing fits in both of them, including the Honda Civic with ease, no issues at all. I don't have to disassemble it at all, and it works fine, and so that's a huge plus for me. Keeping my, my RC flight operations as simple as possible is really important to me, and this biplane helps me accomplish that. It has a common battery, it has a small footprint, it's rugged, it's durable, it, you can fly it in small places, you can fly it really, really slow, you can fly it really, really fast, it really checks a lot of the boxes and as you guys know there's no aircraft that will check all of the boxes but this one does a lot of them for me personally that's part of the reason why I've been flying it for the past two years and it's also part of the reason why I wanted to share it with you guys for for those of you who aren't familiar with flex innovations or or biplanes this size and what it's like to operate them so I hope that you enjoyed this I hope that hopefully you learned something about this airplane specifically but also my type of flight operations in general maybe you're somebody who lives in a in an urban setting like me and is limited on where and how you can fly this is kind of how I go about it so hopefully it's helpful I'd love to hear from you guys where are you flying what are your flying constraints what kind of flight operations are you carrying out with within your own life and and what kind of products are fitting into those flight operations I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments I'll be down there hanging out and chatting with you all it's one of my favorite things about making these videos is hearing from you all if you're looking for more I've been doing about one video per month here on YouTube but I've been active on my other social accounts so I'll link those down in the description below I've been dabbling with TikTok a little bit and on Instagram and whatnot so make sure you check those out if you're into that sort of thing so thank you so much for hanging out and watching and make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet and until next month I will catch you guys later peace
Oh. Ouch. My leg is asleep. Oh, man. 